Alert meeting is being recorded. Alert participants can now see your application. Alert Millicent has left the meeting. Alert Millicent has joined the meeting. So uh, today's lesson, we are going to discuss about financial functions. But before then, we will complete USB 3.0 H uh, task last... volume control window, volume 0%, USB 3.0 HD video capture window. Alert Ruth Kwambaka has joined the meeting. So we'll complete the last discussion that we did in our last Alert discussion. Mary Kamani has left the meeting. That is, we are working with some functions here. Uh, Tooltip, network up. internet access. Alert up. Mary Kamani has joined the meeting. And that is Screen the, sharing meeting controls window. Start today. Alert none has left the meeting. Alert Megan has left the meeting. Alert from Brenda to everyone. Mwilimua, there is some backpack noise. Alert Redemptum Y has joined the meeting. Men, pause recording, Alt plus P. Alert from John Audiambo to everyone, mute the background noise. Alert Megan has joined the meeting. Tooltip, add reaction, screen sharing meet, USB 3.0. Tooltip, tooltip, alert unmute my audio with, alt plus A, exiting narrator. Start screen sharing meeting controls window. Nar exiting narrator. The sound properly. There was some noise here and there. So the last uh, in our last uh, discussion, we did discuss about this lookup and reference functions, and uh, we are dealing with some exercises above there about the v loop, uh, the sum if and count if function. You remember we did the uh, several exercises about running this function. So today, uh, first need to confirm whether the sound is okay. Just confirm. Okay, that's good. So the last uh, discussion, uh, we did a, a few uh, exercises about uh, the sum if count if function and we also prepared some charts. Uh, today, I don't want to concentrate too much on that. I want us now to proceed with much, uh, much more information about these functions, especially the uh, lookup and uh, the lookup reference function. Then we will start with uh, this function we refer to as 
the financial functions. Just a quick reminder on uh, some of the functions that we did. Uh, we did discuss about the lookup. Just confirm whether this is what we did last time. Uh, uh -huh. Someone is asking where we get the lookup. The V lookup, we get it. I will show you where you get it. Uh -huh. So uh, the reference and the lookup functions normally allows us to look up for values. Look up for values either in a current worksheet or in another worksheet. So they allow us to make our work easier, especially when you have big volume of data and these volumes of data, we use them or we want to filter and get short, sim simplified data that will allow us to uh, produce a summarized report. Now, uh, with the data that we already have, probably we can share this data with you. And then we run this function together. Just a minute, let me share this data with you. And then you can run these functions there together. I'll share there in, uh, in the same platform where we are using our, uh, that is the same platform. That is the Zoom platform. I'm going to share that data there. Uh, if you are connected to Zoom using your machine, I don't know how you are going to access this data. I got connected to Zoom using a laptop can transfer it to your machine, get a way of doing that. Then now we can work together with this function. I want to be very fast because these functions uh, that we're just uh, going through them, and then we proceed with our topic today. So here, I'll share data in the chat. I'll send another copy in WhatsApp. So let me chat. So just a minute. So I've shared the two files. One is the lookup and reference function. The other one is VLOOKUP function. So if you have got the data, please confirm that. Uh, please also send us Excel one, two, three. Uh -huh. That one we, okay, I'll send you that too. So if you've got the data, please uh, download it. It is under the chart. We will just get it under the chart, under the chart. And then once you get the data downloaded in your machine, uh, I have sent it there already. Then you can download that data. And then you want to use this data to do some video uh, uh, computation. So I also share this data in WhatsApp. There, the WhatsApp group. So if you are have logged in in the WhatsApp, then you'll still get the same files there. Uh, I'll send those files again. So now once you get the file, I hope you download downloaded the file. So then after downloading the file, then you can now proceed together. So the VLOOKUP, the first function we call VLOOKUP, this VLOOKUP function uh, will allow the user, or is useful when you, uh, you need to perform some calculations based on the references of the table in the cell. The VLOOKUP will always search down the first column of the table and finds you what you want. 
That is, it always finds from the leftmost column and gives you the value on the same row, the same column. So, and several, we have to con several consideration here. We have four consideration when running this uh, VLOOKUP function. These are the four considerations that you need to, to tackle. That is first, you have to specify, you have to specify the value in the leftmost column. Number two, you have to select the range of cells. That is, could be a named range, or sometimes uh, could be just a range of cells that is not named. Then you need to set up the column index offset from the leftmost column of uh, the named range or that range of cell. A logical statement that is true or false, where the true will display an approximate match, but the false displays an exact match. So that is what you are supposed to uh, specify. The syntax of this function is as easy as this, that once you start the function, uh, you're supposed to show first the lookup value, uh, the table array, the column index number, and the range lookup. So that is the simple syntax of this formula. Now, how do we enter this function? Now, from this data you have, you have already downloaded that data, leave so. We'll start with the data with the title lookup and reference. So just get the data that has recap and reference. Then the data will come with three worksheets. That is four, is it four or five worksheets? That is, we have the VLOOKUP worksheet, the HLOOKUP worksheet, the MATCH index and choose. Those are the functions that we, uh, we actually discuss under the lookup functions. So we will start with the VLOOKUP. And we have stated that the VLOOKUP function uh, will work, will help us look up the values always on the right side. From the leftmost column, a value on the left side. This is our table. And this is our table array where we are looking up the values for. That whenever you are given an ID, we will be able to locate that item in this uh, table. The table could be either, it could be in another worksheet, or sometimes this table uh, could be even in another workbook. So how do you insert the function? It's very, very easy. Now you place your cursor in that point. Make sure that your cursor is there. That is, you click on that cell with the products. You want to look up the product based on the IDs. The products based on the IDs. So do we get the products? Then we say we start with equal sign. And once you set the equal sign, then you type the VLOOKUP function, VLOOKUP. So you select VLOOKUP. Once you type VLOOKUP, it pops down here. You'll see a small pop-up that appears down there on the screen. Then you double click on the pop-up and it will now retype the whole uh, word VLOOKUP and opens the bracket. Then, produce the syntax. That syntax that I've shown you there, this small syntax that you are supposed to follow when you are setting up the VLOOKUP function. So when you set up the VLOOKUP function, the first thing it will ask you is to specify the lookup value. What is the lookup value? The lookup value is the value that we are looking up for here, that is, behind here, the value that is subject to change. And in case it changes, then the, the, the name of the product will also change. That lookup value, uh, we'll put a comma, that is after setting up the lookup value, what is the lookup value? The lookup value is the lookup, this is the value you are trying to find in the leftmost column of the table the value you are trying to find, like in our case, the value we are trying to find, we are finding 104 in this table, in this table over here. And this table, the leftmost column is ID. So once you get the ID from this side, we will be able to look up the value 
or a specific specified index that you actually set so after the lookup value you put a comma and after the comma you will see in this active window here that small that small uh, notifier it will give us table array table array is now the table where our data is which we said it could be in this current worksheet or maybe in another worksheet but our table array is in this worksheet so you select that table that is a table that shows where the value we are looking up for are placed then after setting up the table array you are supposed to uh, to set up or to make that table array absolute so that in case you copy down the formula the uh, the table array index or the table array addresses will not shift they will remain a3 and g7 so how do you make them absolute you just press f4 on the keyboard and once you do that then it you set the absolute reference for the two cells using a laptop we said you must press the function key before you press f4 uh, so that it can apply that and make those two cells absolute. Some computers will require you to set absolute cell one at a time. That is, you set absolute for E3, then again you go and set absolute for G7. So provided uh, it will have those dollar signs before the column letters and before the row numbers. Then once you set the table array, then comma, you are supposed to set up the column index. The column index here, we have said that uh, the table array is that table we are looking for. And when you are talking of the table array, it could be a reference to a range of cells. Like in our case, we have used a reference to a range of cells. Or sometimes could be a named range, a named range of cells. So you will, you will use the both, both of these to see how it works for both. So the column index, this column index number from which you want to fetch up the matching value. So in this case, uh, the matching value, we are looking for the product, the product, not the brand. If you are looking for the brand, then the column index will be two because you count from the leftmost column of our table. But since the column index is in three, now here we will type three to specify our column index. Then again, you put a comma. Then finally, it will ask us to set, to set up the lookup, the range lookup. Here you specify whether you want an exact match or an approximate match. So where if you choose true, then that is approximate match. But see, since we need an exact match, then in our case, we're going to double click on false so that we get an exact match then close the bracket. So once you press enter, then uh, the machine will just look up for the value printer. The printers was 104 from the leftmost column. Since 104, it should give us printer above here. If you copy this formula down, then it will still generate the other products. So that is, you look up the value if it is 103 you look up that value go to the that and it gets that value so that is how the lookup function works so i hope that one is clear the value the lookup value so uh anyone with a problem so far So how do we put the dollar sign? That is one question. Do we have any other question? Dollar sign we can actually sometimes, if your machine have a problem with pressing a four, uh, you need to type it direct. You need to type it direct. Because some machines will have that issue. Someone is asking whether we will still do the same in exam. I'm wondering how, how can you ask such a question? So let me remove them and then you see what 
will happen if you don't do that. If I remove these dollar signs, and when I'm put to putting this formula, I want to put this formula again, and putting this formula again, and ignore, ignore the absolute difference, and absolute difference is actually something we did learn. So you select the VLOOKUP, my lookup value will be this, my table array will be this. Then after that, I have ignored the dollar signs and proceeded uh, setting up the column index, which is three, and then choosing an exact match. Now, when I press enter key, it will generate the first value. But remember that the formula needs to be copied down. And by copying this formula down, it means simply means that somewhere within our formula, we will have some errors. So if you have not used the references, that is exactly what you find. Why is this the case? Let me show practically why the case. That is the first, in the first case, the first formula referred to the exact range of cell that is highlighted in, in that color. But when you move on to the next formula, then you will find that the next formula that the range of cells shifted a bit. As you move down, it is it keep on shifting. That range of cell is still shifting. If you proceed here, it is still shifting down. So we don't want our range of cells to keep on shifting. And you can see that clearly there. So that will why you have to uh, you have to specify that the range of cells. Uh, we do not change even when you copy down the formula. How do you apply those dollar signs? If your F4 is not working, you can type them direct before E and before 3, then before G, and then before 7. But F4 makes it so easy because it applies all at once. So if you do that, then you copy down the formula you will get all the values. That is uh, what you're supposed to do. So I think that one is clear. So sometimes you are supposed to use, uh, you are supposed to use a, a named range of cell. If you see here, I had one range of cells that was not named. But below here, I have another named range of cells. When you select this range of cells, then automatically above here, you see the name of that range. That is the name products. So the range of cells is actually referred to as product. You can see it on the formula bar. So, and now, uh, if I'm still looking for the products here, so I just copy products paste them here. Now I want, I want us to run this H lookup. So try to run this lookup, not the H lookup, but V lookup now is as a reference to a named range. We'll start with equal sign, just like we did previously. Then we select the range lookup, which is this one. Then comma, when it asks for the table array, then instead of selecting this range of cells, we are going to type the word product. So instead of that range of cells, even when you highlight the cell, it will write here products. In our formula, it will display the name products. Then after that, it will now reduce a lot of work of setting up the dollar sign. Then the column index we specify again column index three, and again we look for an exact, exact match. So that is how you run the VLOOKUP. The formula will be like this, where you're given a range of cells, or the formula will be like this, where instead of that range of cells, the name of, of cells are named. Just specify the name, that shows the range where the cells uh, so that is 
the first function, the VLOOKUP function, and one of the most powerful function here in Z, but we help you do a lot of work. So next, we have horizontal lookup, horizontal lookup. And under the horizontal lookup, I want us to use the same, same data to do the same. But we already, we already copied. Now, just click on the washed TH lookup. Then you want to run the same function. It's just the application of VLOOKUP. You apply the VLOOKUP technique, then you run this. So the HLOOKUP will start. If you don't have the data, please download the data in your, in your machine. I have sent the data already. Uh, it is also in WhatsApp. So as you configure that data, then this range of cells is in rows, not in columns. So we are getting the products here. So we'll start with the new sign, just like previous, how you did. Then we type HLOOKUP, the HLOOKUP, the lookup value is still this one here. Then the table array is this table that has these values here. And then made absolute of course. Then finally you put, uh, that is next you set the row index. Now this will ask for the row index instead of column index. So you have uh, this product ID, the product is in a row index three, starting from here. That is one, two, three, and we will put three to identify the uh, the products where they are. Then we select the start function. So once you do this, then you still look up for the value down the screen. That is the H lookup function. So after that function, we have another function called match. Match, usually the match and index are closely connected. Eh? So you see how the match works, how these functions actually help us to identify the, uh, the ID or the index of a specific item. So just a minute as you check whether you have this data. For me, you put it here.
So I hope you have uh, have got this. Uh, to insert the reference, absolute reference without manually typing Shift F. Uh, huh. You can also hold F4, function key and F4. You press F4, control. Yeah, if you don't want to type. The index function, uh, you see we have used the VLOOKUP and the VLOOKUP actually simply will help us to, uh, to check especially the index. We have been setting up the index, the index. But like in this VLOOKUP options, we have identified the index of the product from the leftmost column. From this leftmost column, uh, we know the ID. And once you know the ID, we know the position of that product. We know the ID here, we know the position of the product. If I change the product here, say like I change this product to, uh, to CPU, then what will happen is that everywhere we had a printer on this side, we will change it to CPU. So that simply means that it is actually looking up the value. Uh, and by identifying the ID, we get the value. The match function will, uh, will work opposite. That it is using the value that you identify the index. Using the value, you identify the index. Like now you want to identify the index of this value here in this range of cells. So how do you do that? Then we insert the function match. So you type match, and once you select match, then you select the lookup value, which the lookup value is the value over here. Just click there and then put a comma. Then if you ask you about the uh, lookup array, that is this, uh, the range of cells where our data is, then uh, finally, you have to put a comma and set up that we really need an exact match. Uh, then you press enter. So it will give you the value of yellow uh, in this range. That is starting from above counting downward. So that is how this function works, that it will help you to get the index of a value. Now, once you run this, then you'll be able now to do a more a more complex complex work like i have sent you another exercise i would like you to open that there's another file i send you and i want us to work with that file uh, but before then i don't know whether you have exercise exercise uh, nine have you typed exercise nine uh, so far i hope you have exercise nine so for VLOOKUP, you'll go and attempt exercise nine, exercise nine and 10. Exercise nine and 10, that is from this uh, booklet I've sent you. You go and attempt exercise nine and exercise 10. Those two exercises will, will, will remind you about the VLOOKUP, the VLOOKUP and the VLOOKUP and the HLOOKUP. Because like in this exercise, you are, but remember that when you are typing exercise nine, you're supposed to interchange the values, the type and the price. So there was a small mistake, a slight mistake. Your data is supposed to be like this, that the type should be the leftmost column because you always look from the leftmost column. Then from there, you get this. The one is saying, I send it to the group. How can I send the group? You need to type it yourself. You need to have it. You type that data and then you run those two exercises. Student want to pray for 10 minutes. Uh, it's good. You can just go pray for 10 minutes. As you pray, maybe for those people who are uh, logging in, we'll, we'll check on uh, uh, I have sent you another data. You, you need to download that data so far and open the data. Just download the data, then open the data. I've sent you two files. Now you are looking for the next file. 
So the other file was like this. And open it, it was like this. This is the file we are referring to. It has sheet one and sheet two. Sheet one, sheet two. So in sheet two is where we want to run our, our function. In sheet two, we want to run our function here. And uh, you have several ways of be looking up. We can use uh, a number of ways to look up the value. And when you click on sheet three, you actually got those three ways of looking up to a value. So just click on sheet three. That is where you get uh, the various ways of looking up to a value. So now, we want to do it together. We want to do this one together. This is one application of VLOOKUP together with MATCH. That if you want to do a, a formidable job, you have to include the two. You have to match the two functions. So the first function is what we have used, what you call a one-way lookup. And one way lookup is supposed to check the maths of a student. This CASNEP data. That CASNEP data, uh, you are supposed to look for the value for the score of a particular subject, referring to the student and the subject. Then the two way is where you present the name and the subject to get the value. Here you'll already be presenting the the name of a student. Once you present the name of a student, then automatically you will get uh, you will get what you get the value, the answer. Then on the other side, we are going to equip this one more by adding a drop down menu that makes our work even easier. That you don't have to type the name of the student or even the name of the subject. So, yeah, as we wait those guys to go and, uh, and play, is I want to give admin a chance to, uh, to open up so that uh, if you have some question you want to ask verbally, then you can ask. Then from there, we will we'll discuss it together. I know there are some things maybe you'd like to ask verbally. And then from there, but it will be only for a few minutes. And this one should not be, this time should not be wasted uh, by just uh, opening round sound uh, behind the scene there. Just uh, a minute. I ask the admin to open.
I think 10 minutes is over for those people who are, uh, went to play. I've done that. Kazungu can put me as co host. Yeah. Why? So uh, maybe you can have some questions. Or maybe uh, you can have some input on this. I think the room is. I think they have open now. So. Just a minute. Anyone talking? Yes, Brenda. You can unmute your microphone. Eh, uh, limo, there is a uh, in the previous question. Yes. The previous example where there were two products. Uh huh. Uh, there is a place where you entered products. So how does how how do you know that? Um, how does the okay? I don't know how to ask it, but how do you know that it will choose the second product and not the first one? Uh -huh. that's a good question. We'll do that together again. Uh -huh. Just a minute, let me check. So, that is your question is how do you? identify that if you choose this product and not the other yes okay fine i'll show you there so another question let's take the question first uh anyone else with a question you can raise your hand first Okay, I hope uh, most people are satisfied. So on index, the purpose of index, uh, we'll discuss that the purpose of index is very crucial that we need to know how we run the index, uh, that index number. So are those the only questions? Okay, fine. Now, let me tackle those two questions. And then from there, we shall proceed with the application of this function now in the real life. Where you apply this function, how do you, or do you really need this function, especially when you are sorting up your data? Uh, it is very necessary. These functions are very necessary. So also, how do you name the watch? How do you name a range, range, that range? Yeah. So we'll start with the first question from Brenda. That when you are entering the function here, our function was uh, here, and you are looking for, we are actually looking for the product. If we change instead of the product, now we, we look up for the brand. That is here, I've given. This data sometimes is not even like this. Sometimes you're only given one value. This value is subject to change. It will be changing every now and then. That whenever the user types in the value here, it gives you the product by looking up the value over here. But now we are given these several values so that you can actually check the products of the others. So, and when you're typing if this function, then the minute you specify the value to look up here, 
it will go and look up for that value from the leftmost column here. So whatever you look up here, it will go and check it from the leftmost column here. I can use another example, maybe to make it even more clear that when you are working with the data like this, here I'm given data for members. And if you check, I have, I've done something we call freezing, freezing. Because you can have a lot of data and this range of cells here should not, should not scroll up. They should retain there. They should not scroll up. Why? Because they are required during, uh, that is they are normally required to confirm the member ID, to confirm the member, the last name and the first name. So, uh, but here, we need a way of looking up the value of a person. When you are given a big range of data, that is a very wide range of data, the only way you can look up the value is using the find. I believe you have ever used finds in, in your, uh, when you are working with Excel. That is, if you press Control F, you can find for a value. And this time around, I want to find for a value of member ID 01101. If I click find, it will find that value. It will not find the entire record for the member. So that means if I want to make it search for the entire record, then I must involve the VLOOKUP function. And my function, I will put it under the member here. I'll say that equals to VLOOKUP, VLOOKUP, and here I'll select the VLOOKUP function. It will ask me for the, tip, for the lookup value, that whichever the value that will be entered here in this cell, the value is not there right now, but whichever the value that will be entered there, comma, under this range of cells that is starting or beginning from here up to the last record, then, which is of course absolute, or we can leave it not absolute here because we don't we copy the formula down. Then the column index is if I am looking, if I'm given the member ID, what do I want to look up? I'm looking up for the member, the member, and the member here I'll specify using column index two. So that it will give me the member and not the last name. If I type three, it will give me now the last name and not the member. So why? Because the index number shows exactly in which column it should look up for. Then I will select the exact match and then press enter. So since I have not typed any value here, it will provide, it will give me this message that not available. But whenever I type in the value here, like 103, then automatically it will look 103 and give me the member name across above here. And the advantage of this is that once you get this member ID or this member, you can copy across to get other details of the member. But the member was Mike and this was the name. If I change this value to some another ID like 107, then automatically it changes the value across the screen. So it makes your searching very easy and uh, very accurate. And that is how the VLOOKUP function works. So in this case, we are to look up for the value of a product. Again, you will start with the VLOOKUP, then select the VLOOKUP, the value, we are looking up here, value provided. Then the table array, that is the name of the range of cells. And then finally we set up the column index because we are looking up for product and not the blend. Then finally we select uh, uh, the exact match. And if you look up for that value, then from there you can now generate the rest. So that is how this VLOOKUP function works. So let's uh, now proceed. We have seen the match function. And now I want to apply this one in this computation that we have here. 
that computation whereby uh, we need to look up for the value here. So that first one I would like to do it just like the way we did the first one that we are given the student name is Maria and the unit is AFR. Maria scored 69 in AFR. So if I use the VLOOKUP function, will I get that? Then I say VLOOKUP. Then the table array to look up form is we are looking up for the student. So we click the name of the student in the cell. Then the table array is this range of cells we acted on. That is a table array, of course, you have to make it absolute. Then next, you need to specify the, the range lookup, the column index. The column index for AFR is column one, two, three, is number three. Then finally, you look for an exact match. Then enter. So it will automatically look at the value of Maria in AFR. That is one way lookup. That is what we have just done. But sometimes this VLOOKUP may be faced by some challenges, especially if you are looking up for two, that is two way lookup, that you have to present the name of the student and the subject at the same time so that you get the value here. So if we were to insert this function again, then uh, we'll start with equal sign VLOOKUP. Select the VLOOKUP function. We are looking up for, we are looking up for the name, comma, the table array, the table array is the current table here that we are referring to. Then comma, you ask about the column index and you found that AFL, uh, AFL in which index? One, two, three, it is index three. Then finally, you look for an exact match. Close in brackets. So it will give us not available. Why? Because you have not presented the name of a student and the subject. If I present the name of student alone, then again, you may search around and find the, uh, another figure. So we will say that Josh, then the unit is, uh, is correct. Huh? Yeah, so we insert the function here. Then we say you, the two way function, it's two way function. That is one, still one way. But now, you want in the case that the user types here the subject, then it can look for the index of that subject in our worksheet. So meaning that when you're inserting this function, then uh, it will be like this. We start with the equal sign, then we look up. We look up. Then we are looking up for the name of the student. The name of array is already defined. Just a minute, please. Let's unmute, let mute all. Yeah. 
is okay now. So the function, we have already identified the function here. We have set the function. We have uh, we look up. We have identified the lookup value, which is the name of the student. Then the table array, comma. Now, instead of setting up the column index, which now will help us to specify which subject, or which unit, then we'll include the match function. Remember that the match function will help us to identify the index. You select match. And once you choose match function, then it will ask you for the lookup value, which is the value that will be entered above here. Then the lookup array, that is the range of cells where we have our subjects. Then it will ask you to set up whether that is a, an exact match or an approximate match. Then you finally you go and finish up with the VLOOKUP by setting up again an exact match. So it will give us not available. Why? Because you don't have any unit here. But whenever you type a unit, either of the units you have, it gives you the value of that specific person in that unit. So that is how you run the function. And I would like us to use this function again uh, in our next. So here you can now paste function. So I've pasted the formula here. Now I mean, uh, referring the formula may not change, but I will change it manually because now this are, we are not referring to H, we are referring to uh, H11. 11. Then the column index will be determined by what you type above here. So meaning that if you change the subject, it also changes. Now, how do you make the drop down menu? The drop down menu is actually uh, meant to make our work easier. So uh, here, once you click on the cell, you scroll down. Under data validation, initially uh, there was any value, but is allow any value. And I hope even yours is like that. So when you click there, data validation, then you change this one to list, allow a list. Then the source of our data, the source of our data is these names, the names, you highlight the names. Then again, you also need to create another drop down menu here. A drop down menu will change, will change, will change. And here, again, allowing the list, you need to specify uh, this location. So here, you select the range of cells that contain the headings. Then, okay. So such that in case you change this and you change this, then the max changes automatically. That is, you just need to scroll here and change and the max just change uh, automatically. So that is how you apply this uh, function. That is the VLOOKUP plus the MATCH function plus the MATCH function. So I know some people are saying we repeat, uh, but maybe probably as we proceed, we'll keep on revisiting back those uh, that we have already uh, covered. The function might be a bit uh, a bit lengthy, 
that we have combined the VLOOKUP and the MATCH so that we can get a value. And we have automated this one such that you choose here, it changes the subject. So you don't have to type the subject. And that is the function VLOOKUP. You help us to look up value based on an index. But it must work with the MATCH function that allows you to look for an, an index based on the value. So that is how the two function has achieved or has achieved the, uh, that simple. Uh -huh. So, and let's end your workout uh, example, the group, I'll send it to the group. That workout, I'll send it to the group so that at least when you click there, you can actually get the formula and you can master the formula. So, I think that one is now clear. The index and choose, we'll discuss them in, a, in another lesson about the index and choose. These functions, again, are very useful. They can help you to filter a large volume of data uh, in a very short time. So, our next discussion, because I know exercise nine, most of you don't have it. We have done this question together. All I send it there, you open. I think I should do that. I should send that question. Just a minute, let me send the question. Uh, that is eight nine. So this is the exercise, and I would like to share that exercise with you. I can locate it. Is that the one? So we are sharing that there in that uh, chat. So you can download them. I've sent there. Just download the start exercise, then we do it together. We have got it. Confirm that you have it. I'll send another copy in uh, WhatsApp. So then once you get the file, then we want to perform that task. We want to get the price based on item. Price based on item.
I've sent it to several forums, so meaning that now you can have it and you want to perform that task. So the question I had asked here to create the worksheet, show the above, then rename it as Matt Ville. That one I've already done it. Then you're supposed to name the cell range if a 13 to B17 as price. So this one you highlight these cells. Right click on the cells and select define name. The name that you define, you just type the word price. It price or price. Yes. Then okay. So we'll be referring to a named cell range. Named cell range. And the value will be somewhere here. So how do you insert that function? Again, you start with the VLOOKUP. A lookup value, first you need to understand the data. Now this data was about, uh, was a real estate huh? that used to rent houses. We have house numbers, the families, the type. So here yeah, you're given that a house number of a house of type one is charged 120,000. A house of type two is charged this amount. So that is why we are told here that we are supposed to refer to this data down. That as we enter in the formula, then you will consider that. So you type, you start with an equal sign. Sometimes if you don't finish the formula, it always brings a problem. So, so if we look up, the lookup value is the value here. Then the table, the table array, the table array. So the table array, now we specify that our table array is referred to as as prices, that is prices. The table array is referred to as prices. When you select it, you indicate that. So that is our column index. That we look up, then you select the column index, which will be two, because we are looking up for the value in the second column prices. Then column, the last one is exactness. So that when you copy down the formula, it will give you the values of all the others down. How do you define a range of cells? You highlight the range of cells, you right click, then you select define new. Define new. You type your new name, and then you click OK.
So to achieve this, to achieve insurance, where you are told it is price multiplied by insurance rate. An insurance rate was given above here. That means it's supposed to be referred by all formulas. So when you click insurance, it says equal to uh, six percent absolute. Then multiply by by price. Then you can copy down the formula. And finally, the total mortgage. The total mortgage was given as uh, price plus insurance. So, if that is the formula, then you take price, price plus, plus insurance, and to give you the value. So that is how the function works. And you'll actually find, so the, for the one, the, this one here, you can use either the E function or you can also use the, uh, the vertical lookup, but the E function is a bit much easier to use. So that's how you, supposed to compute that work and produce a neat work. So to apply the H lookup is just like just application of H lookup. But when you're working with H lookup, then the values are like this. To run the H lookup, the application of H lookup is exactly like the V lookup. And our the difference is that here the table array is in this man, is in row form. And we are supposed to set up these are uh, or to look up for the values of price, look up for the values, supposed to look up for the values, the values of what? Supposed to look up for the values of, uh, of tax rate and the water bill. And how do you look up for these values? By running this formula or this formula here, that you're supposed to get the price. Actually, the question was like that that given this data that has the price, the tax rate, and this is our look, data to look up for. Sometimes data may be stored in a different worksheet, and we are actually going to try that. That suppose this data was stored in another worksheet. It was not even kept here. We can copy this data in another worksheet and see whether it is able to look up from that worksheet, but first we will start with the normal H lookup. 
in the current worksheet. Then how do you set the function? You start with an equal sign, then you say H lookup. Then H lookup, this is our lookup value. And our table array is this table down here, in our current worksheet. Then you're supposed to set up the row index number, not the column index like previously we did. Here we are checking on the row index starting from the district number, which is the topmost row. And it will be index one, index two, index three, index four. We want to look up for the tax rate. Then you will choose one, two, three. That is index three. So we are looking for the price. The price is supposed to be index two. So you just type two. That is our row index. And looking for an exact match, then uh, it will actually compute. You go checking the addresses, the IDs, check all the IDs, the district numbers. And once you get the value, it will give you the figure down there. But the tax rate was to be computed differently because we are told that to get the tax rate here, we are supposed to the rent tax, take the rent price multiplied by tax rate. That is the rent tax. So you have not computed the tax rate again, you use the HLOOKUP function. The HLOOKUP function. Again, you select the table, the district number, then the table array. This table array. That is uh, then the row index number for tax rate is index number three. Then you choose for an exact match. Close the bracket. So the formula is able to refer to check the taxes for district number two. And to check district number two, then here it will get our value. I'm repeating for swimming pool. Just a minute, I finish here. Then I will copy down this formula to get the tax rate. Those are the tax rate. So to get the rent, the rent was given as rent is price, price plus rent. Now the rent was, the water bill is based on the district number again. But to get the water bill based on the district number. Then the rent, rent you're supposed to take the rent rate down here. That is, uh, you take rent price multiplied by tax rate. So you just say is equal to price multiplied by tax rate. And you will get a figure here. Go back. Then finally, you will have to, the water bill, again, you use the H lookup. H lookup. We are looking up for the district number from the table given down here. And after the table, that is absolute, of course, then you set the row index. Now, this one will be index one, two, three, four, index four. Then finally, you will select the exact match and close the bracket. So when you do this, then it will check whether there is any bill or no bill. Huh? Then that is how you compute using the H lookup. So the concept of the V lookup, the H lookup is just the same. The only difference is that the H lookup will look up for the value on the topmost row, while the V lookup will look up for the value in the leftmost column. And from the topmost row and the leftmost column, you have to identify the index number that shows the actual column or the actual row that that value is. So you have to indicate that. So that is how the two function works.
So I believe that is enough uh, for today. Let me repeat the swing input. Actually, you can even use the, the VLOOKUP to check for the swing input, but since you are not given, you are told that if type is one, then the swing input is here, you type yes. And you see that one, here you have another one. The computer should just identify those and type yes. That is a swing input. But instead, we are using a function that will help us run that argument. And the reason why we do these formulas is to understand how you can base an argument in an Excel worksheet. So in this case, the argument was that if, if type is equal to one, equals to one, then the value if true is supposed to be yes. Else, it should display a blank space. A blank space is shown by opening and closing brackets. And from there, you can copy down the formula to the other worksheets. That is how you compute. And for this was more of the E function, E functions. So the water bill, let me check the water bill. Someone said I wrongly computed the water bill. What is So I will almost close that data. Just a minute. So, uh, what was the data about uh, the water bill? Okay, it was H lookup, yes. Uh, the column index is one, two, three. Oh, it was four. Column index was four. It's okay. And the value is false. So I think it is fine. How do you get the water bill? You are told to get the water bill based on the products. And the water bill based on the products. Water bill is either yes or no, based on the products. That is what you took into consideration. Then finally, uh, the total rent, this one you just add, just add the two. Formatting the rows and columns in decimal places is always important. That if you are told to apply this to decimal places, then you can increase decimal or decrease decimal. You increase the decimals, you highlight all the data, and then you set up the decimal points. The standard decimal number of decimals is just two, two decimal places. So here you are told to do that. Then you save this data and then you produce the chart. So that's running of the VLOOKUP, HLOOKUP. I hope you must you have mastered this. So the part of the theory which you are going to discuss, uh, that is to check later about data visualization and the concept of data visualization is very, is actually highly tested here that a visual aid is any of these tools that you find in Excel, Power BI, in Tableau that allows you to convert your data in form of charts. And if you check that we have several data tools, we have the data management tools, we have data cleaning tools. If you check from the course output, they have actually indicated this, that the tools that we use for managing the data, like the Oracle SQL, these are data management 
data management systems. But for reporting and visualization, Excel and other softwares are very good in that. So that is this programs used for visualizing. Then you also have data cleaning, where you also need softwares to help you clean the data. So that visualization then is what we are referring to. We are referring to that is the term visualization. That that concept, the visualization tool, form of a software that is designed to visualize the data. And some of the tools we use, these are the programs. We have the Power BI, the most common, and Excel. Then we have the Google Charts. You can also use and analyze your data in Google Charts. You can use Tabileo to again do the same. And they are formed to make uh, work a bit easier, especially when it comes to presentation of our work. All these tools are useful to make the work uh, look easier to understand and easier to compute. Then data cleaning will be our next topic about theory. That is what is cleaning. How, how do you clean, why do you clean the data? So it is about data cleaning. So before we do anything under the financial functions, that is the, our next discussion. I'm going to send this file in the group. Then you can download it, impossible print the file. Then as we discuss, we're scribbling some small notes in that file. Not in the group, you can send the number under the chat, then they'll add you in the group so you can access the materials there. So in finance, your functions, uh, we are going to classify this financial function into two. So I, I know and believe that we have gone through so many functions so far, especially the functions used in uh, basic Excel computing of simple formulas. Our last was the VLOOKUP. And this function we have discussed, they will be of great benefit, especially when you are running your data. But whether you're going to use now the advanced function like the NPV, generator of return functions, they cannot work alone. Those functions cannot really work alone. They will require you to still combine them with the functions, these standard functions. And we are going to divide this into two. We have the financial functions that are used for loan amortization. That is the loan, borrowing of the loan, payment of the loan, the rate, now duration, number of years, present value, the future value, all those functions actually deals with loans. And the final result of all these functions, because we are going to run each one of them. And we have even the PPMT and IPMT. All of them are meant to come, to come up with one solution of creating a loan amortization schedule. That is a schedule whereby you don't have to keep on typing the data on the formulas. You just set your formula and your work you only need to feed in the data. Once you feed the data, then the system automatically generates the figures uh, and the figures. Eh? I'm going to use an example. Like when you are creating a new document, then your program usually have that loan amortization schedule. This is a simple schedule. It has already been developed a template. Uh, and sometimes uh, it's not actually uh, it's not actually advisable to use this template in 
in doing your real business. Why? Because most of the settings that have been set here are uh, the US standard settings, which sometimes may not be the same than, than what we use here. So we are going to make our very own loan amortization schedule, whereby in the case the value will keep on changing with time. Here we have a person who borrowed that amount of money at an interest rate, maybe a small interest rate of 3%. Then the loan period in years, maybe you were supposed to return the one in a period of just five years. These are literal, very literal. Let's add more, took a loan of 500,000. Then uh, number of payment per year is 12. 12 huh? So that whenever you set up the starting date, the starting date, which you can even say that you want to have the date today, then automatically the system will write down the date there. Once you hit enter, what will happen is that it will generate because every time the customer or the client pays the loan, it indicates the date, the amount ballot. Then we have the payment, the principal, the tax, and all these will be computed. Uh, they have actually see how, which formulas do you input. When you click inside here, you find actually find such formulas. And these formulas will include even the if. You can see the if inside there, if and as. So meaning that you really need those functions again. And the function now will go one after the other. After this, our next discussion, remember that the first part is about the loan. The second discussion will be about now the investment. Where again, we require some formulas to help us uh, run such. So, and some of the formulas you have the compounded interest, the loan amortization schedule, then others PMT and IR functions, all these uh, functions used in finance. So, which in our next lesson, probably we will go through those functions that is uh, the financial function one after the other. Probably we'll be able to finish up uh, then we can do some application of these functions. So that is the applications. Uh, like in the first, you have so many applications here. So that is a book that will contain all that, those details, those details. So as you write down your numbers, it's also good to indicate your name. So, uh, if your number is not in the group, you send it them. I've said that this financial function, you just classify them into two. That is, we have the first part, 
or financial function about the loan, following of the loans. And those are the functions, simple functions that we use up to the uh, interest, the principal and interest PMTs. Eh? Yeah. So then this will check on the investment and annuity. And here again, you're going to check on the investment where someone invests a specific amount of money. And it's again important to identify whether the two are the two companies to invest in, which is more viable. So that is what the next session will be all about. So for today, we shall stop there. See you on Saturday. I found people saying our class is starting a bit late, but the problem was um, setting up of uh, the machine because the machine was being used by another class, but uh, we are actually trying to change and get another machine. That is a camera, so that at least we'll be starting our class on time. So we apologize for starting our class late. And again, for those people maybe who joined the class uh, late, maybe they are finding some task a bit difficult. Why? Because there are some concepts that we did when we were starting, and we are still using them even right away, uh, right now. That is those simple activities, like the reference of cells, very crucial. Something that you cannot do without, uh, you cannot actually do without referencing, because Excel is all about referencing. So the data that you're going to use in those exercises, again, this data is already typed, it's already formulated. So our work is only to work out on the data. So which, again, uh, I will send still those files that has been typed, Excel files. So that our work will be just downloading and doing uh, working on it. So, so for today, we shall stop there.